When a company that is sometimes lacking in quality buys a design package from a company that is no longer in business and then decides to produce it, you wind up with what we have in this box. And today on the Jiminy Show, we're going to be checking it out. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you are new to the channel, I do tabletop, couch top technically, reviews of firearms. I do go to the range a little bit, but I have physical disability, so I don't go as often as I would like to. Uh, if you guys want to help me do that more, become a member, subscribe, all that fun stuff. You have to say that. It's YouTube, man. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that fun stuff. I will tell you that for $2 a month, you get early access to all my batch film videos, which is what this is part of. So make sure you at least sign up for that. Uh, help the channel grow two bucks a month and you get entered for two chances to win giveaways every month. Uh, yeah. So I think that's all good shiz. Don't you? Yeah. All right. Back to this. This is a Taurus. It came from Liberty Arms down in Harrisonburg, Virginia. I can't link them. So Google them. Harrisonburg, Virginia, Liberty Arms. Uh, you can order one online. You can get one local. You can do whatever you want. Uh, they are $385. They're actually probably a little bit cheaper some places because as you're going to see as we look at this, it's not what I or I think any of you were expecting has a nice hard case, which I do like. Uh, that's why I thought this was in the TH, but a striker fire variant family. But as you'll see as we look at this firearm, no, that is not the case at all. So this is a nice hard case uh, with a gun, extra mag, some back straps, all that good stuff. And as you can see, I went with the OD green. For some reason, I like Taurus's OD green. It looks good. And uh, let's go ahead and take the gun out, clear it. You can already see the first weird looking thing. We'll get back into that in a minute. But yeah, we don't need to look at this. It's a uh, nice foam, has room for three mags, one in the gun, one extra, so you can buy a couple extra mags. Uh, I need to see if this will actually interact with the G3s. Not 100% sure. I don't have a G3 sitting here. Let's go ahead and close up the box, move that out of the way, and take a look at the Taurus TS9 in 9mm. Like I said, it's clear. Good. So, when I first saw this gun, I was looking at the grip angle. It does have the extra back straps, and I would probably change that out. That's actually a little thin for my grip. Puts my finger way out farther than it should. But I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, this was simply a hammer-fired version, or excuse me, striker-fired version of the TH series, which is a hammer-fired gun. And boy, am I wrong. This is actually a direct copy or licensed version of the Boobits BB-6 which is basically the same exact gun, but it's from a company that's no longer producing them. I think they're bankrupt now. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But this is a Boobitz Action 9mm gun, and they copied it so poorly that it's kind of hilarious a little bit, but we'll get into what they messed up. But it is a steel slide, polymer-framed, single-action, no external manual safeties, just a trigger dingus 9mm double-stack pistol. As you can see, once you put the mag in, you know, it's not a bad looking gun. Uh, when you see this ejection port, the first thing that comes up, you got like the Kimber R7 Mako, which is actually very similar in terms of design. And then you have um, obviously the Boobitz gun itself. So the action that's inside of here is kind of funny because you'll see it when we do it. It doesn't lock up at the chamber, obviously, since it's not open top like most of the John Moses Browning short action tilting locking actions are. It actually locks up back here. You can see that little pin back there. So that's actually what retains the gun. It's kind of like a locking lug on top of the chamber. It's an interesting design. Um, and I have to take this one to the range and see how it feels recoil-wise. But I can tell you it's nice to see something like that. But the problem is when a company comes up with stuff like that, it's a little bit hit and miss. And in this case, it was kind of a miss. Has forward and rear slide serrations that are actually pretty usable. I have pretty bad nerve damage so it's hard for me to grab a lot of guns but I can do that uh, has a loaded chamber indicator that you can feel when the gun is loaded has nothing on the back even though it has what looks like a striker indicator there it's interesting that it doesn't has ambidextrous slide lock slide release and they do work meow meow has ambidextrous uh, mag release. However, this is my first gripe. You see what they did there? They kind of wanted to make this a duty style carry gun. And for my grip, like I have big hands. I'm six foot four, right? I, on this side, because of the design right there, cannot release the mag without completely breaking my grip. And my buddies at work can do it. I can't. However, on the left side, it's easier. So I don't know if the spring is janked up, but you can also see that the offside sticks out less, but it's still easier to hit. So I can hit that 
with my left hand. He says as he can't. Uh, without breaking my grip, I can't do it because of the design of it. If I take my finger and drive it straight in, then no problem. So if this was my gun, first thing I was going to do, and spoiler alert, it is my gun, but I got to shoot it stock before I modify it, is as soon as I can, I'm going to take the mag release out and I am going to flatten this hump out. By getting rid of that, it will make the magazine release stand proud, kind of like it does on like 1911s, 2011s, things like that. And that will make it easier to hit. I'm not worried about missing it. I'm not worried about accidentally hitting it. I have enough training that I can usually avoid those. I've carried a uh, Shadow 2 with an extended mag release on it without accidentally dropping my mag. Has a pick rail up front. There's your serial number. It's also a world gun, which means it's sold in other countries. So it's serialized frame, slide, and barrel. And obviously with the pick rail, you can put all kinds of stuff. For example, if you want to run a light, there you go. There's a TLR1H. It sticks out a bit, but hey, you know what? Keeps some of the powder off your lens. Uh, yeah, has a trigger safety and a weird curved shoe. So it comes out and then it goes back in. And then you'll see down here, the reason I said it has no manual external safeties is because they copied the Boobits design for a trigger block. You can see there's a notch in the trigger shoe, right? This on the Boobits gun comes up and blocks the trigger, right? But as you can see, it's non-functional in the Taurus. I cannot get it to come up high enough to engage the back of the trigger, not without possibly damaging it, and I'm not going to do that. So let's see if we do it that way. Can we do it that way? Nope. Can we do it this way? No, so that is actually a copied piece. It's kind of like, uh, do you remember watching Forgotten Weapons and he talks about like the handmade Chinese 1911s, the ones that were made because somebody saw one, so they have a safety that literally does nothing? It's exactly what that is. Don't know why. Must have had to put it there as part of the licensing contract, but it literally doesn't work. So all you have is a trigger safety, which I'm fine with. I run 320s that have no safeties. I run 1911s that have external and grip safeties. So either way, I'm good. Uh, very nicely finished though. I mean, the materials feel good. I like how they cut this top a little bit. Uh, when you have a coat fully enclosed top, it looks a little bit weird when you're looking down it. I would have liked them to see them bring the top up a little bit more, especially since the locking lug is way in there. They could have actually made this a little bit more narrow up top, which would have been an interesting design feature, but they didn't. They just went slab sided sticking to the original design. They did at least cut angles into the front so that it doesn't like snag into your your holster like a Gen 4 Glock can. You see that's nothing but a block. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the trigger feel. In order to do that, go ahead and bring it back. Make sure it's empty. Once you put your finger on the trigger dingus, pull it back. doesn't have a lot of take up, but it does have... Oh, wait. Whoa. I thought that was the wall. That's false. Uh, so yeah, actually it has more take up than I thought. So you push your trigger safety. Obviously, if you don't, you can't get it past that junk part. Once you do that... Then it comes back. The actual pull is not heavy. I can barely hear it and I can't feel that reset at all. But yeah, come back and yeah, it might smooth out. It feels like it will smooth out. That's a problem with a lot of these polymer face trigger shoes and stuff, the way they interface with the bodies and things. Um, they can feel a little bit chunky and crunchy. Honestly, though, it feels better than a Glock trigger. It's just got a lot more garbage take up right there. Like I said, the reset I can barely hear it. You don't feel it at all. But yeah, the... Actually... Sorry. It actually doesn't feel that bad. So the sight picture, it's just three dot white sights. I actually don't like white sights in the rear. I prefer blacked out sights. I feel it draws your eye right to your front sight better. So I'll probably wind up acrylicing that. Uh, they look to be Glock style no they don't that dovetail is way extreme so lakeland probably sells something uh for it um i would change that out looks like it's got a set screw plus the dovetail up front and set screw and dovetail in the rear so there should be plenty of options uh assuming lakeland tries to make anything for the gun unless it gets canceled uh it doesn't have memory uh it doesn't have like gripping on here but it has these notches which is good for your fingers gives you a good place to put them rest them now i run up higher um just because I have big hands, but if you have smaller hands, that's a good place. You could easily put your hands there. The texture, I like it. The finger grooves, I'm not as big a fan of, but with the undercut that it has, it does put my fingers in the right position that I grab the gun correctly. Uh, I like how aggressive Taurus is with their stippling. It's a lot like Smith & Wesson's M&P series. Very nice. 
and very easy to do. So you want to take her apart? Okay, let's do that. Just go ahead and make sure it's clear. And it's going to be a little bit interesting. Can you find the takedowns? What's that? That's right. It's up in the trigger guard. So you need to do this, right? You got to pull your trigger because it's striker fired. You got to pull up while pushing up and then push forward. And you can see once you get a little bit of movement out, you can then take the gun off. So you will see, like a lot of more modern guns, they actually don't have to come completely off. But because of the design of it, the rear rails stop right here. So you don't need much movement at all to take the gun apart. Once you've done that, you can take your guide rod out. And you can see it's just a regular double nested rod. And then you can take your barrel out. And that allows us to check out the lockup on this gun. So you have your chamber and you have that shelf up there. Pretty interesting, right? Well, that chamber part locks up against the underside of the gun. You see right there the ledge? Here, let's get a light in there. Sorry. You can see it's kind of like it works like a locking lug. That's way too bright, but there you go. There you go. That's better. Thumbs up in the comments for my brutal way of doing this. But yeah, you can see that the whole entire thing sits in there. And it's basically a locking lug like a 1911. So it locks it up until the gun fires and then it drops the slide or drops the barrel enough to allow the slide to cycle. Also, it's got looks like some um, heat treating. So I don't know if that's an issue or if they're all like that. Coming back here, you have your firing pin block, your striker tube, all that good stuff. Actually, that's your firing pin block. Holy shiz. Sorry. I like to look at stuff. No, that's your firing pin block. Okay. So it's a two-piece thing. Interesting. You can also see that the chamber is actually an, an insert steel block versus a single piece uh, design. Because of the way it doesn't have a rear on there, you actually have to disassemble it, and it's kind of funny. I don't want to disassemble it completely. Yeah, plus it's got roll pins for your extractor and stuff. Yeah, I, I, it's got a lot of parts on it that are interesting. Let's just put it that way. But interesting doesn't equal market success, which is always a uh, potential downside to an interesting design. Just ask Hudson. Well, you can't because, you know, they don't exist anymore. Looking in here, you can see the single lug that actually locks the entire gun together. It's quite substantial, so that's good. And it does have metal uh, rails, which is also good. Um, yeah, otherwise it's a pretty standard striker fired lower. Nothing fancy. No metal inserts in the front to make it stiffer. Oh, yeah, I love when my gun can do that. Polymer guns are the way of the future. Yeah, get it super hot, and then it melts and warps, and then you have a goofy-looking gun. Okay. Okay. In order to put it back together, bring it back here to the rear of the slide. Make sure you line up your, your, your rail portions, right? Sorry. These guns are very stiff when they're brand new. But once you've done that, just go ahead and do that to it. So... What do I think of the TS9? Well, um, I came into it with the wrong expectations. It's not a TH9 just striker fired. It's actually its own gun, which is cool, but it's a little bit different in that it's not what I expected. Is it a bad thing? Nah. It's just an interesting thing. I want to take it to the range and see how it shoots. Depending on how it shoots determines what level of interaction I have moving forward with it. Do I actually go through the effort of making things easier to use, or do I just get rid of it? This is where you guys come in. I want to hear your ideas. So make sure you leave a comment, questions, anything down below. Let me know what you guys are feeling. Come back for another video. And as always, I'll talk to you later.